So yesterday I was photographing the Milky Way from inside that giant hole behind me. That is Double Arch in Arches National Park, Utah. And whilst I was inside there, I couldn't see much of the night sky and I certainly couldn't see Polaris and the North Celestial Pole. But I still managed to pull up my star tracker, hold her a line and get a three minute exposure of the Milky Way with nice pinpoint round stars. So in today's video, I'm going to explain how I did that last night, but I'm also going to explain two other techniques that you can use when you can't see the celestial poles and you want to use a star tracker. Jump in the shade for this, it's so hot today. It's like 42 degrees and I'm sleeping in a camper van. Now, if you've clicked on this video, I'm going to assume that you already own a star tracker and you're interested in the three different techniques to polar align when you can't see the celestial poles. If that's the case, you might want to skip this chapter of the video whilst I get everybody up to speed on how star trackers work and just exactly what polar alignment is. So I'm going to try and keep it brief, but basically the stars move in the night sky because of Earth's rotation. So the job of a star tracker is to rotate your camera at the same speed that Earth rotates, but in the opposite direction. That cancels out the motion of the stars in the night sky and allows us to track the stars as they move across the night sky. That means we can take exposures of the stars of multiple minutes without having any star trailing. The stars stay nice and pinpoint and round. And because we're taking exposures of multiple minutes, it means we get a brighter image with less noise and much better detail in things like the Milky Way. Now, for a star tracker to counteract Earth's rotation, the axis of rotation of this device, so it rotates your camera that way, the axis of rotation is there, running straight through. We need to make sure that that axis of rotation is parallel or aligned with Earth's axis of rotation. And Earth's axis of rotation runs from the South Pole through the middle of Earth and up to the North Pole. If we were to extend that imaginary line to space, and the night sky, it points to two very distinct points in the night sky. The North Celestial Pole, which we see from the Northern Hemisphere in the North, and the South Celestial Pole, which you can see from the Southern Hemisphere, and it'll be in the South. So to polar align a star tracker, to align it with Earth's axis of rotation, we have to point the axis of rotation of the device at the celestial pole in the sky. So if you're in the northern hemisphere, you point it towards the north celestial pole in the north. And if you're in the southern hemisphere, you point it towards the south celestial pole in the south. And the celestial poles are the two points in the night sky that don't move. All of the other stars turn circles around those points. So then this device will basically rotate your camera such that it follows those stars in that circular rotation. There's a couple of different ways that you'd normally polar align a star tracker. So with something like this, the iOptron SkyGuider Pro, you'd look through this little uh, polar scope here, which is basically a mini telescope, and using an app, you'd look to see where Polaris should be on the little reticle that you can see inside the scope. So you'd move your tracker until Polaris is in the right position, and then it's polar aligned. We're quite lucky in the Northern Hemisphere, we have Polaris, which is a bright star that's very close to the North Celestial Pole. It's a little bit off, but it's good enough. And for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, I'm sorry for you. You guys have to make do with Sigma Octantis, which is magnitude plus 5.8, which basically makes it just about naked eye visible uh, in a dark sky location. So it's not the best marker especially when you compare it to Polaris, which is quite bright. It's the 50th brightest star in the night sky, and there's not many bright stars around it. So it's very easy for us in the Northern Hemisphere to find the North Celestial Pole. So if you're down in the Southern Hemisphere, sorry. Okay, before I explain the first technique, there's a couple of things you need to know. Number one, if you're shooting with a wide angle lens, like a 14 mil, 24 mil, 50 mil, maybe even an 85 mil at the push, then you don't need accurate polar alignment. You don't need to look at an app and work out exactly where Polaris needs to be on the reticle inside the polar scope. You just don't need that level of accuracy. Rough polar alignment will be enough to extend your shutter speed by multiple times. And the wider angle of a lens you're using, the less accurate polar alignment that you need. 
The second thing you need to know is that the angle between the horizon and the celestial pole will be equal to your current latitude on Earth. So at the moment, I'm in Arches National Park. I'm about 39 degrees north of the equator. And so Polaris and the North Celestial Pole will be 39 degrees above the horizon. It might be easier if I explain that a bit more visually. So here's a couple of images from my book, Photographing the Night Sky. And if you picture it this way, so Earth's axis of rotation runs from the South Pole through the center of Earth to the North Pole, and then up to the night sky. So if you were standing on the North Pole, Earth's axis of rotation would be going straight up at a point in the night sky called the zenith or the zenith, which is the point of the night sky that's directly above you. And so the angle between the celestial pole and the horizon will be 90 degrees, and you are 90 degrees north of the equator. If you head 10 degrees south, you'll be at 80 degrees north, and then the celestial pole will also drop by about 10 degrees closer to the horizon. It'll be 80 degrees above the horizon. And that keeps happening until you get to the equator, which is zero degrees north, and then Polaris and the North Celestial Pole will be perfectly on the horizon. It'll be zero degrees above the horizon. And at the equator, the North Celestial Pole will be on the northern horizon, and the South Celestial Pole will be on the southern horizon. And then as you go into the southern hemisphere, you can no longer see the North Celestial Pole, and the South Celestial Pole starts getting higher and higher in the sky. Now for the past eight months or so, I've been using a two-way head instead of a ball head. And a two-way head basically allows you to pan and tilt separately. And I've really been enjoying the setup, but I'm gonna make an entire video about this setup very soon. But what I would normally do to polar align is this has degree markings on the pan and the tilt. So I make sure that my head is nice and level. This head, the Leo Photo VH30R, has a bubble level inside it so I know when it's nice and level. And I'm also using the Benro Tortoise TTOR 34 CLV video tripod, which has a built-in level in head, which makes it great for use with this two-way head. And then all I need to do is set the angle of elevation to 39 degrees for Arches National Park. So the angle between the horizon and the axis of rotation here is 39 degrees. Normally, I'd then pan whilst looking through the polar scope until Polaris comes into the polar scope. Once Polaris is in the polar scope and it's roughly in the middle, that's usually good enough for me and I'll start using my camera and I'll start tracking. So I had to find another way to find north and there's a few ways you can do that so first of all you can bring up the app stellarium or any other night sky emulator and then find a star a bright star which is in the south and you can basically aim your star tracker 180 degrees away from that star and uh, and then you're pretty much pointed north similarly you could find a bright star in the east or the west and kind of aim your tracker 90 degrees away from that star but if you're using the star tracker and you can't see north, chances are you're facing south because you want to photograph the Milky Way core and you can see some stars in the south. So it's best to just align with some stars in the south. Another way to find north obviously is to use a compass, but be aware that true north and magnetic north are not in the same direction. And it varies depending on where you are on Earth, but there's a difference between magnetic north and true north, which is called the declination or variation. So it's worth looking up what the variation is for your specific location, because sometimes, especially in North America, it can be 20 to 30 degrees different. So you have to bear that in mind when you're using a compass. Another way is to look at maps, and sometimes I'll look at terrain maps and try and find a distinct feature, like a mountain in the, in the distance that is in the south or in the east or the west. And just using terrain maps, you can kind of look for specific things that you might think that are in the south. Like for example, now that little bump over there, that little mountain is actually in the south, so I can just aim my tracker towards that and I'm pretty much polar aligned because I've got the angle of elevation set. Geared heads are also good alternatives that have degree markings on both the pan and tilt axes. Ball heads, obviously, as soon as you unlock the ball head, it moves in any direction, so it's going to be very difficult to achieve polar alignment in this way using a ball head. How awesome is it that I can share these tips with you guys completely free 
on YouTube. Well, it's all thanks to the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where thousands of creative and curious minds come together to take the next step in their creative journey. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy the astrophotography related content on Skillshare and especially Ian Norman's Nightscapes Landscape Astrophotography class, which is a good crash course in all of the basics of landscape astrophotography. And I actually learned a lot of the basics from Ian Norman myself. I've recently started Spanish for Beginners by Peter Hanley because I find myself traveling to a lot of Spanish speaking countries and so I would love to be able to speak with the locals and so I've started his Spanish course and it's great. He involves his daughter who's a native speaker so you get to learn from somebody who's learned Spanish themselves but also listen to native speakers and learn properly. Premium members get access to all of the courses on Skillshare and there's a lot more than just photography and language learning. There's any creative topic you can possibly think of from photography to videography to graphic design to video editing to freelancing to accounting to running a business. It's just anything and everything creative. And I have a special offer for you guys. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the video description down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. You can access and try as many of the courses as you want in that month and see if it's right for you. So what are you waiting for? Follow that link in the video description down below and come and join thousands of creative and curious minds on Skillshare. Right, so the second technique involves a laser. So you could use this technique in the cave with a ball head as your Star Trek mount. Now, I don't have a laser on me, so I'm just gonna use this for demonstration purposes. Now, the general idea of using a laser, which is very common with the move shoot, move Star Tracker, is that you mount it to the side of the device such that it's parallel with the axis of rotation and the laser points in the direction of the axis of rotation. But in this instance, because we can't see the celestial pole, we're gonna hold the laser on top of the device and flat so that it's now 90 degrees from the axis of rotation of the device. And with a little bit of math, and a little bit of luck, we might find a star in the south that acts as a good guiding star for polar alignment. So let's start with the math. First of all, we know that the angle between the horizon and the celestial pole is gonna be equal to our latitude. So for me right now, that's 39 degrees. We've mounted the laser 90 degrees away from the axis of rotation. So 90 plus 39 is 129. And then if we take 180 degrees and take away that 129, we get 51 degrees. So I wanna find a star that's 51 degrees in the south and point the laser at that instead. And once I've done that, I know that this is gonna be pointing towards um, Polaris and the North Celestial Pole. And so I would pull out a night sky emulator like Stellarium and I would look 51 degrees in the south and I'd see that at 20 to 11 there's actually a fairly bright star called 41 off Yuki that is roughly 51 degrees in the south and so I'd point the laser at that star at that time roughly and uh, I would have a pretty decent rough polar alignment. And the third technique involves an app called PS Align Pro. And this was brought to my attention by a couple of my workshop clients recently. So how amazing it is that I can teach these people about landscape astrophotography. And I also learn from them as well. And so with PS Align Pro, which does cost a couple of quid, um, there's actually a few different ways that you can polar align. And so you go to this daytime polar alignment and then you put your phone flat on the device such that the top of your phone is pointing towards where the celestial pole should be. And you then get these, this crosshair and you basically move the device until the crosshair is in the center of those concentric circles there. And then you've got a pretty decent rough polar alignment. Now, the trick to using an app like this is to first make sure that the compass in your phone has accustomed to Earth's magnetic field for your location. And so you do the, the figure of eight thing, which you also do with drones before you take off. But if you just wave your camera in a figure of eight and get lots of nice rotation on it, that will sort of help to calibrate the, the compass so that it's a little bit more accurate. And then you would just put the phone flat on the top of the device here, parallel with the axis of rotation with the top of the phone looking up and go through that crosshair alignment. So that's a really neat app and uh, 
quite a cool way to polar align your star tracker. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you found these tips and tricks useful. If you have, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, don't miss out on the pre-orders of my book, Photographing the Night Sky, which is being printed as we speak, and we will be shipping around the middle to the end of August. And all pre-orders are on discount, and they will be signed by me. So don't miss out on that. If you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.